Well, it's time to get back on this project. Could this scene take place in your household? Hey, Mom. Oh, Mom. You know about that radio that went dead this morning? Pop said he'd fix it tonight. Well, he did. Our radio's in a worse mess than the, than the alarm clock was when I went to work on it. Good day. Welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. It's time to uh, continue on on our Heathkit DX60B. Today we're going to be tackling step two of my uh, restoration pro process. So we will be doing the power supply uh, and capacitors. And uh, we'll also be doing the capacitor, the electrolyte capacitors in the audio stages, which there's one, and some resistors. And this one, since this one has a, a diode rectifier, we're going to be freshening up those diodes. We're going to put some new ones in. So that's what uh, we're going to focus on now. And, of course, any resistors in the power supply or in around the audio stage, we're going to also have a look at. So uh, let's tear right into that right away. Okay, let's do a, a little bit of an overview of what I'd like to accomplish. So we have this uh, wonderful uh, ungrounded power cord that's got to go. And this is a little bit jumbled up here, so we'll see what we can do to clean this up. But we want to change the power cord to a three-pronger. Um, this thing here that looks like a neon light is actually a circuit breaker, <clears throat> which is supposed to automatically reset. There are some complaints of it failing or not working, so I think we're just going to pull it and put one of my standard fuse blocks in. We also have two filter caps here that we're going to put two of the new uh, Y-class safeties in. So uh, fuse block, new cord, new caps to feed the transmitter and we're going to check and make sure that uh, um, our hot is going to switch first fuse switch system so once that's done we've got some caps to change which there's a, a big can cap on the chassis and it's a double one it's got 40 microfarads and these are also 40 microfarads um, now i'm going to be upgrading these from 40 to 68. now i'm doing so and i understand that doing that we can get away with it a because we don't have a filter choke here b the dx60b can always use more filtering and a cleaner signal to get rid of any low level hum on the carrier but the most important thing is as we discussed in the first video the inrush current problem on the switch up here that we're going to institute um, a 5k 5 watt resistor across the switch to keep these capacitors partly charged all the time so we take the load off the switch so that's how I can get away with that is that having 68 uh, microfarads rather than 40 is, is beneficial but we have to do so with a couple of other modifications in order to make sure that uh, it handles it okay. So we'll be updating the uh, re restaffing, the can on the chassis, replacing these, probably putting in a terminal block because the newer ones are much smaller. So over here we have another electrolyte capacitor. It looks like a double 20 that we'll, we'll replace. Um, and I've cut open some of these diodes here to do some testing. So we will be replacing these with modern diodes and probably some of the other resistors as we go. We have another filter cap, uh, electrolyte style up here in the audio section uh, that we will be replacing. So, uh, and of course, we'll check some of the resistors in around those audio tubes as we go. So that is what I hope to accomplish um, in this uh, step two. So I'll come back with snippets of video as I get work done. Okay, just uh, forgot to add something in this mess of uh, stuff we have to do. Uh, these little guys came in. I don't know if you can see it. Looks like a little black disc capacitor. It's a thermistor inrush limiter. And this is designed to limit current to 2 amps. So I'll be putting this in the 120 circuit on the hot lead. And that saves the other part of the switch we discussed in the first part of this, this series, in part one, is that when you first turn this switch on, uh, it controls the AC to the transformer. 
And uh, due to the current drawn from the transformer starting up and uh, the magnetic field uh, um, expanding and charging capacitors and all kinds of other neat things, that often the uh, surge current can be three to five amps. And uh, it causes arcing on the switch. And at some point, the switch will die. So we're going to put this in place. And this limits the current. The current will not pass two amps. The transmitter will run five on 1.7 to 1.8 amps at full output, um, but this limits the current um, on startup and saves that part of the switch. So we're going to have the keep alive 5K 5 watt resistor that's going to keep these capacitor charged. And we're going to do this little guy here to uh, save the switch because the switch is in good shape still. So we're going to take all those steps to make sure that uh, we don't burn that switch out because that switch is kind of sort of not easy to obtain or almost you almost have to uh, either rebuild the switch and put new contacts in somehow. Some people use little number two screws and put new little contacts in. Uh, sometimes you get lucky and you find a, a rig that's been ditched that's got a good switch, but those are big problems that we don't really want to do. So we'll engineer engineer them out right now. Okay, we've done our 120 volt power mods. We've got our uh, three prong cord in here. We've got our strain relief. We've got our fuse block. We have two new safety caps and we have our inrush current limiter and it's all wired in and looking good. So uh, next phase for me is gonna be dealing with the uh, these sets of filter caps. So we'll get that done and I'll be back again. Sorry for the freehand shot here, but here's the uh, the rebuilt capacitor, the restaffing as I call it. Those are two 68 microfarad caps at 450 volts stacked in there. I'm just getting ready to wrap it in insulation and uh, put the cover back on and uh, back in the set it goes. Okay, so I've got the uh, can back installed on the chassis, which is here and the 270 ohm resistor across it uh, has been replaced. A lot of the resistors I've replaced have been discovered as I'm going through this particular step of power supply. But uh, here are the two new electrolytes on the top, on the underside of the chassis. As stated, I had upgraded them to 68 uh, microfarads. Um, I've also replaced one of the power resistors, which was um, uh, a way out. Um, I've, I've made an interesting discovery uh, in amongst these two resistors, and I'm going to put the a photo up on the screen in a minute, we'll, but we'll come back to that. But all of the diodes are new. Uh, with two more new electrolyte ca caps and two other resistors were discovered, again, out of range. Another electrolyte cap was installed up here, and as I did that, I decided that I would measure these resistors around its uh, mounting point, uh, contact point. And I found that these three were also out of range. So I went ahead early and changed those. Um, just going to stop uh, and do a little bit of a public service announcement. The band switch up here, the contacts on it are all silver plated. And um, over time, that silver plating goes like doesn't just tarnish. It goes beyond that and goes absolutely black. And if you allow that to happen and you use the radio, well, it often burns out the 80 meter contact. And I'm going to put up a picture of another uh, um, DX60 I did a while ago where that happened, where the owner permitted the contacts on the band switch to get really, really uh, uh, grubby and then loaded it up on 80 meters, even maybe even possibly into a high SWR switch uh, scenario. And the contact for the 80 meter uh, portion of the band disappeared it burnt it blew and uh, i'm gonna just well yeah you can see here i'll put the picture up and uh, um, if you look at the little red arrow um, you can see how bad uh, that was so keeping that switch clean is important um, that particular contact and that particular capacitor here can be a problem with the DX60 by loading the, this radio up into a high SWR on the 80 meter band, 
burning the contact or eating this uh, capacitor. This is a 68 puff at 4 kilovolt ceramic disc capacitor. They are not easy to get. I have only one new spare in stock and uh, I've not been able to find another. Uh, I just got lucky and got it off eBay. But um, so that's a bit of a public service announcement. Make sure that you clean this band switch very well and you keep it clean. Um, that's a, a, a real important uh, part of this radio. All the other switches I've cleaned and whatnot, um, they're not as critical, except for the selector switch. We, pre we discussed in the first episode, it has two contacts that burn. One is the 120 volt contact that burns is when you first turn it on, there's an inrush of current of three to five amps and the tiny little sensitive contacts um, burn very easy. So we've dealt with that by putting the inrush current limiter uh, down here so that the current can't rise above two amps. Um, also, you can see here what I've done is I've put in on the other set of contacts that burn, which are to actually switch the high voltage off and on. I've put the, my keep alive resistor to keep the capacitors partly charged while it's the radio's in standby so that when you go to transmit, um, the surge current um, isn't so bad. Like when you go from standby to AM or CW, um, the uh, uh, capacitors are partly charged and the stress on the switch is quite limited. So that modification has been done. So let's come back to these couple of resistors here. And I'm just going to put up a picture. Um, I think if my memory serves me correctly. I think this is R37. I'll check in a minute. The original installer or kit builder had this resistor installed wrong. One end of this is on ground, and he had the other end of it essentially on the output of the diodes um, at the beginning of this resistor here. He, he had that resistor across the entire power supply, and I discovered that by accident. Uh, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm checking values as I go, but not necessarily checking to make sure it's correct. Um, but what happened was, is when I replaced all the diodes and caps, um, I turned the unit on so that I could do some voltage measurements in the power supply. Like high voltage should be 700 to 740 uh, volts DC. B plus should be around 300, 305, 310. So these are the numbers that I was looking for when I turned the unit on to check the voltages with no tubes in it, but no load. And what I got for uh, for high voltage, I got 410 volts, which blew an alarm bell with me. And for my B+, plus, I got only 190 volts. So that made me start looking around to see what was going on. And that's what I found. Like uh, um, He put this resistor in the wrong spot. Again, I'll put up a picture here, uh, and you can see... Uh, uh, the red arrow shows where it is, and the yellow arrow shows where it should have been. So I just cut those resistors out, placed, replaced them where they're properly supposed to be. I now have 720 um, uh, volts on the plate DC, and I have 310 B+. Plus. So what I can say is, is this kit, although it might have transmitted, the, the power would have been very low, and it never worked properly. Uh, right from the get-go. I don't believe this this transmitter ever did very well for the original kit builder just because of that area, error. I've not found anything else wrong yet, but uh, I'm not done checking. So we've just kind of sort of completed the step two of the power supply. We've done the main big filter cans. We've done the, the other cans that were underneath. We've upgraded to 68 microfarads. We've put the keep alive resistor to keep these capacitors charged. We've got some new resistors. We've got some new modern one amp diodes um, and all the other uh, electrolytes have been replaced and a few other spots or resistors around. Uh, we've had a public service announcement here about keeping this band sw switch clean. So uh, I think that's going to complete it for this step. Um, the next video I'll, I will do will be the uh, capacitor, the uh, wax paper type capacitors and check the rest of the resistors. And I mean, I've got the medium oldies here one two three 
So that's not going to be a big job, but I'm going to go through the rest of the resistors and uh, and see what's what. So um, so far so good. Looks like a success uh, at this point. We'll keep plugging along, and uh, I guess we're going to call this video done. So uh, thanks again for tuning in. Please don't forget to subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.